What's up everybody? In a few short steps, I'm going to teach you how to paint a painting just like this coming right up. All right, so as you can see, I've got this canvas fully painted black. I'm gonna go ahead and start with our furthest thing back, which is gonna be our sky. We're gonna add those stars. So I want you to go ahead and find a brush, maybe with some loose bristles. We're gonna take some plain white with that brush. We're gonna make it pretty wet, all right? So a really thinned out paint. And we're just gonna kind of splatter this uh, thing up with some stars, some galaxy stuff in the background. All right, so as you can see, we've got the canvas a little bit more up close so you can see. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take that brush that I picked out. It's maybe got some loose bristles and I'm putting some pretty loose, almost fluid, um, plain white on this brush. And you can kind of wipe it off a little bit on your plate or your palette, whatever you have. And again, you're gonna kind of take your finger across your bristles and just kind of fling some of this paint just very randomly, just very lightly too. You kind of try to stay about, I'd say two to three inches away from uh, your actual painting. So hopefully have a good service in the back that just, you know, paint's not getting everywhere. Um, but just a really fun step because it adds a little bit more of a realistic sky nighttime. Now some of these stars can be a little bit closer together. You can have some clusters, maybe a little bit more. Remember, it's just outer space and all those stars are very random all over the place. But you can see it's really coming out quite nicely. And just being gentle with it, being careful with it, and you know, just having a nice little fun time. So there you go. I've got some basic stars. And that's about all I need. You don't need to do too much. You still want a lot of that black to still show. But there you go. All right, so for our next step, I, we've got our like nice dark sky. We've got some, you know, stars just really just kind of randomly going all over this. But what we want to do is maybe make some northern lights. So I'm going to take more of a flat brush right here. And um, I'd say maybe more of your small to medium size of a, of a nice flat brush. You can see it's just very nice and easy there. And I'm going to go ahead and put some of the plain blue on that brush. I'm going to put some plain blue right on there just a little bit now we're going to go a little bit right on top of this actual black here you're not going to really see too much of it we're going to come right about i just say just down right here and we're going to make kind of a nice little line just coming right up into our sky you might be able to see a little bit of it it does soak into that uh, dark black background a little bit but no worries and we're going to go ahead and make another line just kind of doing the same thing but this one's maybe coming out a little bit further out to your left of your canvas so you can see we've got that line we've got our second line and then eventually yes we're going to make a third and that one's going to just kind of taper off almost to the side of your canvas what you did was you just kind of made a nice little layer a base layer of paint just kind of mapping out where you want these northern lights to pop out all right and you can see i'm just adding a little bit of blue on there just to make it a little bit wet so we're going to use that for our advantage for our next step coming up and as you can see we've got some nice lines just to give us an idea of where these northern lights are so you can actually just kind of wipe off that brush on your plate if you'd like it's okay if there's some still plain blue on there and we're going to take just a little bit of white on our brush and it's okay it's going to make kind of like a powdery light blue and what i want you to do is take some of that and just kind of just dab or blot some of that white 
kind of following your lines. All right, just kind of put it right on top of there. Very random. There's no right or wrong, but you know, just follow your lines and just blot or dab some of that plain white. And you're going to see that those lines start to get a little bit more obvious, which is nice. We can start to really see that those lines pop out. And those are going to guide us to where we want these lights. Okay. And very random. So you can see just blotting or dabbing some of those a little bit of white there. Oh, that one's a lot there. So, so you can see, sometimes you might get a little bit, sometimes you get, might get a lot. No worries, no big deal. Now we're gonna go ahead and put that brush down and we are gonna grab maybe more of, I'd say another flat brush or a fan brush. You can, I'm gonna just use this like kind of like thin bristly medium sized brush, but it is considered kind of a flat brush and it's dry. All right, that's dry brush. We're not gonna do you know, um, any paint, extra paint on that. But what you're gonna do is actually you're gonna take some of your paint here and just kind of lift up. Look at that, you're gonna lift up some of your, your color from those lines that you made. You're just gonna lift it up. All right, and you can kind of use the sides there. You can kind of go up and down a little bit, but Really, you want to have a nice guided line of light, just a really pretty step. And you can hear that brush, it's still dry. And it's just taking some of that paint and taking it and blending it into that black a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and lift some of this up here. Just following that line and just making quick brush strokes, just taking some of that beautiful paint up. Let's follow it and do some cool lifting. Whoa. Now some of these might just start touching each other. It's okay. Some of these might, you can see like some of these lines are going up in the sky. Nature is not perfect. And we always use that to our advantage so we can actually make mistakes. All right. So you see you've got some kind of cool lights there and you can still kind of work with those lights. You can take that small brush that you were still, you know, using and you can kind of pick that up and you can bring some more. If you want to add some like finer lines too, you can use a small brush. So check that out. You can see that it really adds a little bit more definition. You just kind of finish it up. And it's just a really pretty step. And some of that paint just comes off in chunks. Some of it, you know, comes off a little bit less. But just it's just fun. Just real pretty. And if you want, you can add more blue in there just to kind of soften some of that. See, you can see just, this makes it just really a fun step. Now, if you're like, oh my gosh, I put way too much on there. I put way too much paint. You can actually take some black and you can do the opposite. You can kind of break it up a little bit as well. I can just add a little bit more here. Now, also too, you can do this with different colors. We can do mint green in there. Um, you know, I know on your plate, we do actually have um, a little bit of that red. So if you wanted, you, you could take a little bit of red, just put it into a little bit of your white, just kind of take a little bit of red, mix it into your white, mix kind of like a light purple. It's okay if it's a little bit watered down too. And look at that beautiful color. A little bit of red into your white. And we can use that color throughout the painting now. We're gonna need to, because it is a really pretty color. There you go. Just kind of an idea of your lights. And these lights can go every which way here, but 
you know, we could work on this for a long time. But we're gonna go ahead and just kind of move on from here. But very pretty. You can see just it adds a nice, beautiful color in there. And just it just changes your painting just so dramatically. It just adds just a cool touch to that sky. And that's that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna be starting to fizzle over to our mountains. So go ahead and grab a medium to larger size brush. And now I've seen, of course, different artists use different tools, whatever you need. Um, I use brushes throughout this, but you can use a palette knife, whatever you'd like. We are gonna go ahead and just make a little bit of a nice, um, little bit of white and light blue together. And I'm just going to mix a little bit of white and blue, making kind of a powdery light blue with this first color. This is going to be our base color for our, um, some mountains. And what you can do is you can maybe just draw a little bit of the side of a mountain right there. And we can make it kind of come really close. We're going to make another line just kind of coming right down as well. All right, and actually you can take some of that and you can bring it down and just kind of break it up a little bit as we go down. This is a, a palette knife does work good on this. I've tried that a few times, um, but we're just gonna just brush it up with some brushes on this one. And we can make a few other mountain peaks. Now the reason why we're doing highlights on this side is because our lights are kind of, you know, really taking a lot of that beautiful color and just reflecting down onto your mountains. I'm gonna bring some down here. Now don't worry, we're gonna come back and we're gonna fill some of this up here. We're gonna you know, take our time and you know, just get a good feel for it. Here's another little mountain peak over here. And you can see I can bring this one up even further if you want a really tall mountain. Totally up to you. As you can see, it's just starting to come together a little bit. So these are your highlights of your mountain. Now, if you want to add a little bit of low lights, you just take that same brush. You can put some, um, a little bit of blue and mix it into your light blue, making kind of a darker version. And these can be the side, the, uh, the sides where a little bit more of a shadow and we can mess with the color. We don't worry about like, you know, all that. I want you to just kind of get the technique right now and at least get a feel for, you know, okay, this is how you do it. This is how you kind of blend these colors. So you can bring some of this blue into your white. And if, you, if you're like, hey, that's too blue, don't worry here, put some plain white on there and change it up. All right, again, nature is not perfect. We kind of just play around with it a little bit. This is just practice. And we're going to bring some of these light blue, just kind of dusting across the side of our canvas here. But that's the reflection. Really pretty step. And if you want, you can bring some dark blue just down below, a little bit darker. There's still some white on that brush, but it adds maybe the effect that looking like there's maybe some mountains down there and we can add shadows after this. All right. So you can see just how fun this is coming together. All right. Total different vibe than when we first had it here. I'm going to put another mountain here. Why not? Let's fill in some of the space over there. And you can see we want to darken that up. Look at that. I just put a little bit of blue on that brush and shadowed it up. Now we can also go back and we can add more highlights just to brighten up some of the areas too. And that's what's so fun. You can just kind of go back and forth. Now mountains typically, you know, can take some time because you're learning the technique. You're learning how to do highlights and low lights but we'll keep we'll keep at it guys all right so you can see really pretty I'm gonna go ahead and taper some blue off of here 
and there you go. It's just some kind of a nice bit of highlighting and low lighting. Again, like I said, you can always go back, put some plain white on that brush. You can rinse it off, dry it off at any time, and you can add even some a new layer of highlights. Look at this. Now it's really just getting texturized. It's really just starting to pop a little bit more. The more layers you add, the more kind of depth you start to kind of see with some of these paintings. Here, I'm going to add some highlights in here. Might as well take some of that paint off my brush. Boom. And you just mess around with it. So go ahead and do that. Work on that for a little bit. Work on your mountains. We're going to come back. We'll add some shadows. All right, so as you can see, we've got just some really beautiful color. All right, there you go, guys. So as you can see, we got some really beautiful color on this. Now, what I wanna do is just kind of take a look at this painting and just look down here. We've got some empty space right down below. I wanna go ahead and maybe add some reflection. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little bit of that light blue that I have and just add Maybe a little bit of reflection happening. Maybe there's some water down here. Just to fill in some of this space. All right, we'll leave like a little bit of a gap here. We'll add some like beautiful wildlife, maybe some fun stuff down there, maybe some trees, whatnot. But I'm going this back and forth, side to side motion, just to add a little bit of fun reflection, a little bit of fun color on this painting. It's just a real pretty step when it's when it really comes together. But there you go. And again, like I said, you can always go back. If you're like, hey, you know what, like I just had put too much blue on there. You know, I don't like that. I put, you know, too much. You know, you can change it up. You can put some black right back on your brush and take some black and you know, just do over. Start it over. Just like that. Okay, and you can see we've got some fun little areas right there. We've got uh, room to where we can make some trees. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab maybe more of a medium um, to smaller size brush. And I'm gonna just go ahead and put some plain black. So we gotta be a little bit more careful with this color because it can really saturate your painting very quickly if you let it. Okay, so we gotta be a little bit more careful with bl uh, black. Granted, we did use that for um, you know, the beginning of our painting, but, you know, we want to add, you know, maybe some uh, trees. So we're going to go ahead and take a little bit of plain black on your brush, and I'm going to go ahead and I want to make some land here. You can see we've got some water highlighting right there. I'm going to go ahead and make some land and a tree right there. And very carefully, I'm gonna just come down a little bit right here and very lightly with my brush, go back and forth, side to side. And I'm gonna make this little tree right here. And I just barely touching the canvas as I kind of go down. You can see there's random gaps. There's not evenness, 
All right, I'm not making this all perfect. You know, um, you know, I, I'm just you know coming down a little bit, very lightly again, touching the canvas, and I'm adding these little itty bitty brush strokes, just kind of, you know, back and forth, side to side, very quickly. No perfection, no perfection. All right, and we'll make another one here. It's okay if maybe your tree trunks are a little bent, no big deal. That happens out there in the wild. So you can see we've got got like a nice little grouping of trees there. Um, if you want, you could even make, you know, a big one. You know, this guy's maybe a big guy that's taken up a lot of real estate over here. And he wants to be maybe a little bit more shown off. You know, this guy is just coming right in front of that water. And now it's all perspective. And eventually, if we want, we can add some highlights on those trees, and that would change everything again. But you can see, as we come closer down to this mountain, now that tree starts to really pop off because it's going against that light color in the back. And very lightly, again, touching the canvas. Not much paint is needed, and I'm going pretty quick, just wailing through it. No rhyme or reason, no perfection, but again, that's just when you start getting that technique down and figuring out, you know, how do I do that? How do I work that a little bit more? So we can actually add um, maybe some trees, you know, I'd say maybe make some little spikes, you know, down in the background, just kind of showcasing, hey, we do have a little bit of a forest line up on here. And what you do is you take that brush and just very lightly just kind of go. And that creates the illusion that there are some, some trees in that back dropping. Pretty sweet. So again, it's figuring out these little steps, little, little treats that, um, you know, that we learn as artists along the way. And I'm going to help Yeah, I'm going to teach you all these little tricks of the trade and get you used to, you know, making some of these awesome techniques happen for you at home. All right, see, look at, I'm gonna go ahead and maybe add some shadowing in my mountains. Maybe I'm just like, you know what, I wanna add a little bit more breaking up and it adds some texture. I'm just taking the leftover paint, essentially, that's on my brush and just, you know, using it to my advantage. A little cluster of trees. Yeah, look, there you go. Add some of that in there. Boom, look what that did, changed it all. <laughs> it's so fun, you can just you just keep messing with this. Look at that one, I know that was a dangerous one right there because that's the, the top mountain, but you know, check this out when you start making little shadows. Sometimes it just works out, it looks so cool. And maybe it just looks like some of that snow just couldn't get into some of those crevices. It happens, all right. Boom. Look at that. Fun texturizing. And you can just edit, you could have left it blue, whatever you want. I mean, really, you could just totally mess around with this. It's good practice, good for, you know, getting the hang of it and figuring out your brushes and texturizing and all that stuff so just fun steps i love it it's great we're going to keep this rock in here we're going to add some more maybe some highlighted stuff maybe some snow got on some trees um not maybe these ones here but you know we'll, we'll figure it out so keep doing that let's add some highlights next all right so for our highlights we want to go ahead and grab a small brush and i'd say more of a larger size brush all right and we're going to go ahead and try the small size brush First, we're gonna just put some plain white on there. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add some nice little bits of land back here. All right, we're gonna blot or just very lightly tap your brush against the canvas. And what we're doing is we're making an obvious line of where there's maybe some vegetation in the background versus where the water reflection kind of is. So you can see we're just adding some blotting or dabbing and what it does is it starts to give you a good idea of perspective again it really kind of shows 
okay, there is some vegetation like starting to happen in our painting. Now come closer, maybe some of it gets a little bit higher there. But you can, as you can see, you know, there is some more life. This is a big forest here and we can add a lot more to it. Now, as we come closer, we can add a little bit more of that white paint and we can really just start, you know, blotting or dabbing, you know, some random areas. Let's start here in this corner and it just kind of gives you the illusion that there's maybe some plant life right there. All right, then we can just, we can do some right in front here. I'm just blotting or dabbing. Now I'm still using the smaller brush. You are more than welcome to switch. Let me show you. I'm gonna just go ahead and switch to like a larger brush here. This one's got some bigger bristles. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some plain white, just kind of just kind of blotting it on there, just blotting it, and you know, just adding, you know, that extra little layer. Have fun, you know, like really just kind of get a feel for your bristles and your brushes. It takes time. You got to kind of use them all and just see, you know, what ones are you know shining for you, which one works best. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add maybe some more. And you can see I'm not making clusters where they're all the same. I'm kind of like just kind of taking some of that paint and making it a little bit more random, um, you know, so it looks like it's happening a little bit more naturally in the wild. Okay, I'm just gonna add a little bit more. You can see I added these here. Look at, I'm gonna add some guys there. Oh yeah. Now, the way you can add some of the low lights is you just put some blue on your that same brush and you add maybe some low lights, maybe some of the blue, some of the snow is shadowed. So you can add some little bit of low lights in there. And you can play around with that. Just a little bit of blue, not too much though, guys. And Let's add some shadows over here to some of these. So really, essentially, you could just kind of mess around with it all the time. You can just play, enjoy this painting. It's such a fun time, just really just, you know, having a good time, just blasting this painting on here, just going at it, just say, you know what, I'm gonna try it, give it a whirl, see what you can do, you know? It's all about practice, all about just messing up, making mistakes and kind of, you know, learning from those. All right, you guys got this. All right, so keep it going. All right, we're going to go ahead and be wrapping up this painting here. But if you want to, again, you can add, you know, some highlights to some of the trees if you want to. I like to keep them a little bit more like that dark color. Um, that just looks really cool. And then again, you can just, you know, just keep messing around with it until you feel like, you know what, I've got it. I think I'm, I'm, I'm good. I think I, I like what I did with this painting. Get some more vegetation over here. <laughs> and then, I don't know, like I see a little bit of a gap where I want to kind of fix it. So check this out. You can see some of that vegetation that's right underneath. I'm gonna go ahead and take some black on my brush, small brush, and just add some shadowing. Just because we added, I wanna make sure that there's a good shoreline right there. Okay, you got your shoreline. And then now, what you do is you take your small brush and you just add a little bit of that reflection right down here on the water kind of reflecting some of that, those bushes. And there's some of that fine detail work so that you know, once you start kind of getting some of that fine detail work and you know you're getting close to wrapping up your painting there. So there it is guys, enjoy it, all right? Enjoy the process, all right? That's what it's all about is just having fun 
and enjoying the process. But this was definitely, um, you know, a real slower step. I'm going to teach this for a class too. I'm going to teach this to you guys um, where it's a little bit more faster. We have a painting party at home for you. So there you go. Enjoy. All right. See you at the next painting.